Hello guys, I'm Peter from uh, Builder Boeing. Previous video I showed you that I just bought this used throttle quadrant and FSC non-motorized pro version. It is natively supported by ProSim, which means that you just plug it in, assign the USB port, and then you're ready for takeoff. Well, in my case, uh, it was more like a rejected takeoff because the unit was kaput, it didn't work. When I moved the handles, nothing happened. It was dead. So I was afraid if it was totally toast or at least some of it could be saved. Good news is now it's working. I've been doing a, putting a lot of work into it the last couple of weeks, but let's just rewind to me two weeks ago, finding out what was wrong. Perhaps I was a bit too naive when I wanted to mount this in the cockpit because it is natively supported by ProSim, so it's just plug and play, right? Well, no, it turns out it didn't work. So right now, I've more or less taken the whole throttle apart here because the switches were working, um, the fuel cutoffs here were working, the, the flaps uh, up here were working, the parking brake down here, that was working. So the switches were working, which made me conclude that it wasn't the interface board that you can see down there. It wasn't the interface board that was toast. I've read about that. Now, um, something else was wrong. So I tried to replace the potentiometer with the speed brake here. I tried to replace that with one that I had laying around and all of a sudden it worked. So my conclusion was all the potentiometers in the throttle quadrant here were toast. I had to replace them. So that, that is what I've been spending the weekend on. It's not that difficult actually. I, I just need to take it apart in like slices here from, from each side so I can get to the potentiometers. There's one here for the reverser and one here for the throttle and then replace them. And I've done it on the other side and that works now. The first other side up here, that works if I move it in ProSim. I don't know if you can see this. You can see that lever number two from the top is moving up and down. Whereas the top one, I'm moving the other throttle handle right now, doesn't work because the potentiometer is a toast. So, Half an hour replacing these two, and then I'm ready to mount it. Of course, put it back together and then mount it in the cockpit. The twin wheel before was black, but uh, not painted. It was just a raw material. So I painted it glossy black. And apparently I suck big time at spray painting. Either that or the paint wasn't of a decent quality because I did everything by the book. Thin layers, six or seven times, I still it came out with bubbles and I don't know why. I simply, I don't know why, but that's what it is. It could be better, but I'm not gonna redo it because then they have to strip down the whole thing and that's not gonna happen. So I have to live with this. Also wanna to touch on the, the, the handles here because the handles was mounted with a bracket that looks like this. So this square sits right in there, okay? When a square is inside something that's squared, you're not able to turn it. Right? You need a cylinder instead to be able to turn something. So I 3D printed a cylinder of these 15 millimeters. And now all of a sudden I'm able to move the handle in and out. And I'm just so puzzled why FSC chose a square instead of a cylinder. They could have working handles. It's the same with the switches up here that we'll cover later. They're not interfaced and it's so easy for them to do. So to me, it seems like FSC want to downgrade this version compared to perhaps the motorized version. I just find that very strange. But anyways, these were, these were changed to cylinders and then the handles easily come in and out. So let's see what else has happened in the throttle. I did put some work into the trim wheels. So when turning the trim wheels around, it will be registered and you can see when I turn the wheel here, you can see there's something moving over here as well. So let me just go into what I tried to achieve down here. First up, we have a large pulley wheel here that's connected to the, to the rod, the shaft here. And then we have a pulley wheel here, which is located, uh, placed on an encoder. So when you turn the, the trim wheels, an encoder will register uh, your turns. Then I have a small wheel down here and my initial idea was to put a motor here and I tried with a stepper motor but I wasn't I simply wasn't able to turn around uh, the, 
the trim wheel, uh, it required too much force. So I reckon I need some sort of DC motor. I placed a small wheel for the, uh, a small uh, pulley wheel here for the motor to get a ratio between the large one and the small one because the motor is going to turn around fairly quick. So when this turns around one time, this isn't turning around one time. It takes around, I don't know, six or eight revolutions here for this to turn around one time. So you can see three, four, five, six, seven, like seven turns here is one turn up here. That is to prevent the trim wheel from spinning around like crazy. But as I mentioned, didn't work out. The indicator, the, the, the encoder here isn't connected to anything on this board here. So that's why I got a three pin connector that I need to put somewhere else. I didn't have a uh, enclosed uh, pulley, uh, what do you call these? Band, string, pulley belt. So I just took one and closed it up with zip ties, but I ordered some 40 centimeter uh, pulley belts that's enclosed and they're on their way right now from China. So that's why I'm not removing this. I could just put these two directly together, but as I've already ordered the right, uh, the right belts for this setup, I'll just let it be. And once the, the belts arrive, I'll just replace this belt. So that's why I'm not just directly connecting these two. If I get a motor at some point, I'm going to redo anything anyway, because it needs to go down here, but there's a bit more room for a large DC motor. Next, I spend a few days on designing a bracket like this, and um, they're on both sides uh, of, of the throttle. And uh, I did that in order to mount a servo here. You can see here the servo horn, and it's uh, it's a 3D printed extension. And then I decide, designed this pull arm, and I reckon you guessed what it what it does. It moves the trim indicator up and down. So now I'm able to see roughly what the trim value is. Now, due to the servo, it's not like you're able to see if it's 4.2 or 4.5. You'll need to see that elsewhere, but at least now it is working, it is moving. And there's one over here as well on the captain side there with a the servo as well. And it is interfaced down here with a uh, Polulu card uh, for just for those two servos. But I really like those Polulu cards. So there's a Maestro 12 right there. So after wiring up the new potentiometers, I also wired up these three switches that wasn't interfaced. I changed this one from one of those sad looking six millimeter switches to something that looks a bit more beefier, a 12 millimeter push switch. And uh, doing so, I had to drill a bigger hole in the middle here. I was a bit afraid or reluctant to do that, but it turned out okay. And this just looks a bit more realistic and had a, has a better feel to it. While wiring up these uh, switches, I found a, something that was a bit strange to me. You see down here, there's an interface board right there. All the different switches and potentiometers, they run into this board. And then with this ribbon cable, it runs, runs into the main interface board, which is down here, okay? Up here on this interface board, see if we can focus on this one right there. There is something called SW horn. I know it's upside down. It says SW horn. So this black and red wire here is my wiring up of the horn cutout switch. So I just had to solder it onto this interface board to make it work. It worked natively in ProSim once there was a signal there. And it, it just puzzles me a bit that FSC could easily have wired up that switch, but chose not to. I find that strange. It's the same with, with the trim wheels over here. They could easily have made a round, uh, a round piece instead of a squared piece and make the trim handles work. They just chose not to. So it's like somehow this unit shouldn't be fully functional because you want to buy the motorized unit instead because it's not difficult for them to wire up a switch. It's just a matter of putting on the wire onto the interface board. So that's a bit strange.
Another thing that I did spend time on is backlighting of the flaps indicator and the speed brake indicator. So it looks like this at night. 12 millimeter LED strips really adds to the feeling when flying around. Next, I did spend some time on the flap handle here. See if I can uh, turn the camera a bit and you can see that the gray metal stops right there and then it continues again from here all the way up to there, making slots uh, available for a guard like this. So I tried to design that in Fusion 360 and it took forever. Now the idea is that you're not able to move the flap lever without stopping here at one and again at 15. So if I just grab the handle here, you can move it up, but you need to go down there at 15 and then you can continue the way up to one. And then from there, to the position and vice versa. Making this <laughs> took like forever. It's an arch with angles sticking in two different directions and believe you me, it just took forever. This is just a small sample of my prototyping. There are so many of these and they took like one and a half hours each to print and then I needed to adjust them. So this is taking me like a week to make that guard up there. Oh dear, but now it's there and it's working. I don't know if, if it was worth the time, but at least now it's there. So here it is, all done and ready to be installed in the cockpit. One thing I forgot to mention, I did give these handles some grease. They were all squeaking before when you moved them. A bit of grease made them go up and down. So smooth, very nice. I really like these these trim wheels when you move one of them the other one turns as well that's pretty nice so after many weeks of work we're finally there ready for takeoff let's go Peter from Villeneuve, you guys take care, bye bye.